What's up, y'all? It's Annabelle with That Good Shit, and I'm here with the incredible... Big Toby, a.k.a. Handsome Lagosian, Falsetto Finesser. Falsetto Finesser is ridiculous. <laughs> I was listening to your new album, Panic, on the way here, and the number one thing that I kept saying to myself was, his falsetto is ridiculous. Word. When did you discover that you were the Falsetto Finesser? <laughs> um... Probably because I used to sing like I used to sing in church in the choir mm -hmm. um, and I was the only guy. Mm -hmm. It was me and my brother and um, they just picked me to sing all the high notes. Nice. Yeah. So I used to sing the high parts with the with the girls and and I didn't want to show anybody in high school that I could sing that high. Mm -hmm. But then when during college, when I met my manager, uh, David, you know, he sent, he found me just singing to myself one day and he was like, yo, you got to do that more often. Yeah. And then I just started working on it and developing that range. That's amazing. So singing came first in your life before rapping did. Or did they come in around the same time? I think they came in around the same time. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your first memories of rapping for those first few times. Okay. So the first few times I was just like copying other rappers, you know what I'm saying? Um, trying to sound like DMX or trying to sound like jay-z or whoever you name it just yeah. my favorite rappers and then over time i started to develop my own voice mm -hmm. uh, throughout all that and i really leaned into this thing that i call unapologetic soul music right. which is just like my raw um expression mm -hmm. of sound yeah absolutely what about that sound is unapologetic to you is it in the lyrics is it in the sound itself is it in both where does that appear Okay, that's a great question. Um, the reason why I call it unapologetic is because it's as honest mm -hmm. and it's as um, genuine as possible, mm -hmm. you know. And I think about, you know, I, th I think about making these sounds that people may find, you know, weird mm -hmm. or different, mm -hmm. you know. And for me, it's like I'm doing myself a service by being as true to my sound as possible absolutely. you know and being as true to myself as per as, as possible absolutely yeah. what are some moments specifically on your new album panic that were really unapologetic or honest for you or maybe even like scary for you to make at first oh okay um the intro of the album mm -hmm. someone i knew just like the the storytelling on there you know there's stories on there that i haven't told anybody right and it's like, it's the first time that, you know, I've publicly said a lot of those things. Mm -hmm. And you got to imagine, like, you never know how people are going to take your story. You never know how people are going to take your whole being. Mm -hmm. But once you put it out, it's out there. You know what I'm saying? So that was definitely scary for me. But I think it's also cathartic. You know, there's an element to songwriting that's uh, therapeutic. Mm -hmm. So that's how I look at it. Absolutely. And do you feel like there was like weight lifted off your shoulders after you were able to get those stories out there? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then that's why I'm chilling eating fruit on a sunny day, you know? We're chilling eating fruit on a sunny day. And just in general, what has the reaction from your community been like to your new album, Panic? What have you been, you know, hearing people say about it? How do you feel like people are reacting to it? I think a lot of people were first worried for me because they're like... <laughs> They're like, why is your album called Panic? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. They're like, are you okay? <laughs> right. Right. And and I tell them, you know, not only am I okay, I'm great. Like, I'm healing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I think I've lived so much of my life living under this paradigm of, like, fear mm -hmm. and not allowing love to come in. Right. So that when I made that conscious decision to be, like, I do want to allow love to come in and I do want to operate from a place of love mm -hmm. outside of fear. I was like, I need to make this project for closure. Right. Yeah. And so in that way, does panic kind of encapsulate a lot of the feelings on that album that you were trying to let go of? A hundred percent. Okay. It's closure for me. It's closure. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's the panic era and now we're moving into a new era that's really about like love and openness. What would, so if you're like exiting this era of panic, what's the new era that you're in called? Okay. So now here's the thing about it. When you're going, at least for me, I'm going to speak for myself. Okay. When you're going through a phase into the next phase, it's hard work. It is. And it's hard work. 
And um, I can't say that I'm fully gone. Right. Um, because as I'm evolving as a human being and as a person, old feelings, they're dredged up to the surface. Yeah. And when it comes up to the surface, I got to learn how to deal with it and how to manage it. I think we all do. So it's about moving graciously and giving yourself grace too. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't want to skip steps. I don't want to be like, oh yeah, I'm all, yeah. you know what I mean? It's all butterflies now. Right. It's really not all butterflies. Yeah. But we're creating the space for the butterflies to come in and be like, this is home. Absolutely. I feel like the reality of moving into a new era of your life isn't like all the bad being gone and it only being butterflies. It's about like having the tools to deal with the hard things that you didn't have before. Yeah. You know, the hard things never go away, unfortunately, because that's life. But we grow and then we can deal with them better. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You said it perfectly. Yeah. What are some lessons that you learned throughout the <laughs> what are some lessons you learned throughout the creation of your album Panic um, that are going to help you make your next album and also just help you navigate life moving forward? Yeah, one of the main lessons I learned, this was from my producer Alex Goose, um, always go the extra mile. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes it can be a difficult decision because you don't know where going this extra road will take you. Mm -hmm. It may feel more inconvenient, but I think when you look back at it and you say, oh, my God, you know, I'm glad we did that thing, mm -hmm. you know. So um, go the extra mile for sure. That's one thing that I learned. Mm -hmm. And two, there's power in collaboration, mm -hmm. you know. Like even though it's my name on the album, it wouldn't sound the way it does if it wasn't for all the people who played on it, mm -hmm. who sang on it, who, you know, lent a note or two, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And... You know, I think um, even though it's a it's a musical album, the lesson that I take from that is when you're creating anything that's meant to last, you know, for generations, we're tapping into as many sources as possible. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a genius to them that they can contribute. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think I really felt the power of collaboration throughout the album because this the sound of every song was so rich and so full. It's like every moment, every second was full of some kind of amazing instrumentation or amazing vocals and like amazing messaging. I really felt like I could hear that there were so many minds at work throughout the album. It came out very beautiful. Hey, thank you so much. You're so welcome. I appreciate that. Um, I also want to ask you about what you've been listening to recently because I love chopping it up with my favorite artists about their music taste. So what's been on the top of your playlist? Mm so much um the top of my playlist is heavy okay it's a very top heavy playlist okay um i've been listening to dinner party i've been listening to black odyssey i've been listening to topaz jones yes i've been listening to mavi yes. i've been listening to overcast yes we have yeah, yeah i've been listening to overcast i i got put on to him from your from your event love that um Oh my goodness, what else have I been listening to? Man, I've been listening to a lot. Um, what am I drawing a blank? Kenny Mason. Mm -hmm. um, soul music. I've been listening to soul music too. Yeah. Like um, taking it back to Al Green, Marvin Gaye, Nina Simone. Um, even why am I blanking on dude's name? He's a he's a he's a, he's a legend. Um, Fred Astaire, mm. because there was something about that era of music that I don't want to say it was just timeless. It was just so like effortless, mm. you know, and people just said exactly how they were feeling. Yeah, they you know, did. <laughs> you remind me of, you know, the sun glow at 12 p.m. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like just shit like that. And to me, it's like that's fresh. And who are some smaller rising artists that you've been listening to lately, if any? Um, yeah, my boy, uh, Timmy O, uh, from Boston, uh, he has a good friend named Lucas, who was at your event last night, too, mm -hmm. amazing producer, um, oh, man, who else, who else can I think of? Dang, you put me on the spot. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's good to be on the spot. Yeah. Um, yo, can I peek at my phone? Yeah, you can, <laughs> you can, you can cheat a little bit. Let me see. <laughs> oh, 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, Looney from Toronto. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's an amazing singer. Okay. I got to tap into Looney. Um, who else I got here? Oh, okay, okay, you know, Mike. Mike. Yeah, Always yeah. amazing. Yo, Mike, Mike is that dude. Uh, ARDN from Edmonton, Canada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's great. Arden, you uh -huh. know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Who else we got here? Oh, my boy, Jarrell Jerome. Mm -hmm. He just dropped some music. Dang. Mm-hmm. Nah, music is in good hands. We music good. is in great hands. This dude right here, Tommy Richmond. <laughs> Tommy Richmond is the future. You know, he was the headliner of our first ever Sunday Sounds. Really? Yeah. Yo, this song has been on repeat for me, like, all day long. So good. Yeah, so, you know, free game. Love it. Shout out yeah. to Tommy Richmond, mm. the future. Well, Toby, I'm just so excited for you. Your new album is gorgeous. I've been listening to it nonstop. The music you make is really special. The messages that you have in your music are really special. I really appreciate what you express. Uh, I really appreciate your line also in Flowers about how, like, uh, the girl having a knife in her purse and saying, or was it you or Mavi who said that? I said that. It was you. You were saying how, like, this girl has a knife in her purse and she's like, there's never a place where, like, a woman feels safe. And I don't know. I feel like I uh, really touched hearing, like, men talk about their awareness of like male privilege and music and i feel like i don't hear that a lot so hearing that made me feel just really appreciative oh man that's what's up yeah that makes me very happy because yeah. you know when i heard that story it hit me for real yeah so you know i think it's the least i could do yeah absolutely the girls appreciate it yeah, shout out to y'all <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the girls absolutely well, is there anything else that the people should know about toby um, all I want to say is, obviously, you know, Panic is out now. Listen to it, show us some love, and, you know, sit with it. Whatever you feel, whether it's whatever emotion it is, just sit with it. And um, going on tour with Mick Jenkins 2024, so see you at a city near you. That's the last thing I actually have to ask you about. That slipped my mind. How does it feel to be going on tour with Mick Jenkins? That is a massive accomplishment. Oh, my goodness. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm already prepping, like, the set list and, the, you know, everything that I want to do. I really want to make it special for people. Yeah. So it's going to be dope. <laughs> yeah, we're all rooting for you. We're all so excited. When I saw that tour announcement, I, like, dropped to my knees in the street. <laughs> I was like, yeah, let's go. Yeah, so yeah, really nah, excited for you. It's going to be fire. Be that's just fun. gonna be fire so yeah pop out to one of the shows you know yeah pop out and see him on tour mm -hmm. cool thank you very much toby already let's go yeah, thanks for having me oh and by the way sunday sounds the event thank you for having me you guys did such an amazing job thank you you know what i'm saying just bringing all these people together like anyways i had like a what's the word I don't want to say outer body experience, but it was it was getting pretty close to it. It was getting pretty crazy up there. It's getting pretty wild yeah. still. Yeah, it was a good fucking time. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you had a good time. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. Let's go. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Good job, y'all. <laughs>